You've seen a lot of history in Washington. You've made your fair share. Give us your reactions to what we saw tonight. Well, there's no question this was a, a very moving and memorable speech. Uh, and I think in many ways historic. Uh, it'll go down in history uh, very close to Churchill uh, coming to the United States uh, to ask for support uh, in the battle against Nazism. Uh, tonight, we have Zelensky going before the Congress uh, and asking for support uh, in the war against Putin. Uh, I, I think this is, uh, this is going to send a very strong message uh, the unity that was shown tonight will send a strong message to Putin, uh, whose basic interest is to break the will of the United States and break the will of, uh, uh, of the Ukraine. But I think the message tonight is that there's tremendous unity here and that uh, that unity is going to hold together uh, throughout this war until we come to an end that hopefully will represent victory for Ukraine. One of the things we heard from President Zelensky, uh, Mr. Secretary, was he thinks that next year, 2023, could well be a turning point that is really critical. We really bear down right now. From what you understand of what's going on, both from your experience as Secretary of Defense, but also head of the CIA, is that plausible? Well, there's no question uh, that we're seeing a pivotal moment in this war. Uh, it's clear that uh, the tide of war has changed. It's clear that uh, Ukraine... Uh, has, uh, has the upper hand here in terms of its ability to be able to, uh, to move and gain territory and uh, basically take on the Russians. Uh, but the Russians uh, and Putin have made clear that they're not going anywhere and that Putin is going to basically triple down uh, and continue to do whatever he can to try to show that, uh, that he's not going to be defeated. Uh, and so the real challenge is going to be this next year as to whether or not the unity of Ukraine, the United States, and our allies can hold together, that we can continue to provide the arms necessary uh, to the Ukrainians in order to be able to, to fight and to defeat this effort by Russia. Uh, I think that if we can hold together, and I think we will, I think uh, Joe Biden is committed to this. I think both Republicans and Democrats are frankly committed to this effort. Why? Because it represents not only the defense of democracy in the Ukraine, it represents the defense of democracies, period. And for that reason, we cannot afford to, to suddenly walk away from this challenge that we're now embarked on. Uh, Mr. Sherry, one of the important developments today, I believe, was the decision by the United States government to supply uh, Patriot missiles uh, to uh, Ukraine. Give us your sense of what difference that could make in the battlefield. Why is that so important? Oh, it's tremendously important because um, what we see now is Putin uh, using missiles, using drones in order to attack infrastructure and attack innocent men, women, and children. Uh, and the only way to try to protect against that is with strong air defense. Uh, I, I've said for a long time that what is needed in Ukraine is a comprehensive air defense system. I'm glad that uh, the Patriot uh, battery has, is being provided. It's going to take some time. It's going to take some training to put it into effect. Uh, and I believe it's probably the beginning of trying to put together a more comprehensive air defense system that can literally frustrate Putin's efforts to try to break the will of the Ukrainian people. So, Mr. Secretary, in the news conference held this afternoon between President Biden and President uh, Zelensky, one of the reporters asked a question, which was, you've been reluctant to give the Patriot missiles. Now you've decided to give the Patriot missiles. Why don't you just go to the ultimate position? Why are you doing it piecemeal? Why are you doing one step at a time? President Biden responded, I'm not sure he fully answered that. Is there an answer to that? Why don't we just give them whatever they need right now to get it over with? I think one, one thing I heard in that uh, press conference was that uh, the president's trying to walk this line in terms of protecting the unity with our allies in Europe uh, and at the same time provide uh, as much support as possible to the Ukrainians to defend themselves. 
Uh, and so it is, uh, it is a balance that the United States is striking uh, in order to make sure that we remain unified with regards to the support for the Ukraine. Uh, I, I think that ultimately uh, both our allies and the United States recognize that uh, in, order for, in order for the Ukrainians to be able to defend themselves successfully, they need a strong air defense system. Uh, you know, I, I believe that th this provision of the Patriot battery is going to be the beginning of putting in place a comprehensive air defense system that I think could represent probably the ultimate barrier to Putin getting his way in the Ukraine. Mr. Secretary, I hope you'll stay with us because I want to bring in a couple of my colleagues, our contributors, Rick Davis of Stonecart Capital and Jeannie Shantzano. She's a professor of political science at Iona University. Rick, why don't you ask President, the Secretary what you would like to know? Yeah, I think one of the things that I'm very curious about on the same topic of weapon systems going to Ukraine is, you know, we know there's continuous buildups on the Russian border, and we know that the policy administration has been not to give long strike weapons uh, to the Ukrainians. In fact, we actually put governors on some of the weapons so that they're not used in Russian territory. But if we know that the Russian buildup is happening, and we know that they're going to use that buildup to reinforce their troops in uh, Ukraine and even potentially attack cities like Kyiv, um, why is it that we wouldn't want the Ukrainians to be able to strike those Russian troops in their own territory? I think, uh, I think that is uh, an issue for the Ukrainians uh, to basically confront, because uh, if, uh, if Ukraine is aware that the Russians are mobilizing uh, in order to uh, be able to continue this invasion in the Ukraine, uh, the Ukraine's I think, are going to be smart enough to understand that they've got to be able to hit those targets. Uh, and I think they will hit those targets. They already have hit some targets uh, with regards to Russian bases. Uh, and so I, I believe very strongly that uh, Ukraine is going to get the support they need in order to be able to go after any kind of mobilized effort by Russia to prolong this war. Yeah, Mr. Panetta, it's so good to talk to you. Um, the, I heard about a month or two ago you put the uh, sort of the idea of nuclear war or in a nuclear attack by Russia at about 20 to 25 percent. Do you think that the speech tonight has changed those odds at all? Um, do you think the strides that Ukraine has made on the battlefield has changed that? Oh, and do you think that there's going to be an impact because of the Patriot missiles that we're sending over? Well, I, I think when you put together a series of events uh, that it's sending a very strong message uh, to Putin. Uh, the fact that uh, Zelensky came to uh, Washington, uh, met with the president, spoke to the Congress, is going to get almost $2 billion in aid, uh, plus the uh, Patriot battery. Uh, it makes very clear that the United States is not going anywhere, despite uh, Putin's threats, uh, despite uh, his uh, push to, to indicate that somehow uh, he'll, he'll strike back in some way. That has had no effect in terms of uh, the decision to help them. I think also that President Xi's advice to Putin to stay away from using a nuclear weapon carries a lot more weight with Putin, uh, and he knows that he could lose his only ally if, in fact, he engages some kind of battlefield nuclear weapon. So I think right now uh, the likelihood is that Putin is going to continue to raise hell with cruise missiles, with drones, but I think he's going to stay away from nuclear. Mr. Secretary, we heard President Zelensky refer to Russia as terrorists several times this evening, lumping them together with Iran. My understanding is President Zelensky would like to have the United States designate Russia a terrorist entity. Would that advance the cause of freedom and democracy? Well, it's one of those issues that obviously uh, uh, the State Department uh, and uh, the Defense Department have to think uh, carefully about uh, using kind of the labels. Uh, with regards to, uh, to terrorism. I believe that they're trying to negotiate some kind of agreement to 
basically designate Russia as an aggressor. Uh, that'll give them some opportunity to be able to, to then use other approaches to uh, be able to hit Russia. Uh, I think that makes some sense. I think once you use these designated labels, uh, that it carries a lot of implications that uh, may not always represent the best interests for the United States or for the world. So I suspect they're going to try to develop some kind of negotiated agreement as to what they will label Russia as. Uh, Mr. Secretary, one last one here. We heard President Zelensky talk about a possible peace plan. We also heard it in the news conference, I must say, with President Biden, a 10-point plan he proposed to President Biden. He said President Biden has subscribed to that. I is that a serious effort to move toward peace? Because as I understand it, that plan, almost by definition, is something Vladimir Putin at this point could not accept. Yeah, I, I think the bottom line is that Putin is not uh, is not ready to negotiate. Uh, and he's going to continue to basically uh, continue to pound the Ukrainians and continue to test uh, the will of the United States. He's going to continue to do that. Uh, but I also think it's important uh, that the message be that if there is to be a negotiation, uh, that uh, the Ukraine is going to want to protect uh, its territory. Uh, that message uh, needs to be heard. Uh, and I'm glad that the United States is basically embracing that kind of approach. I think, I think the only thing that will convince Putin at this point is force. Putin doesn't listen to words. He doesn't listen to diplomacy. He doesn't listen to the urgings of other countries. He, the, the, the only thing that's going to move Putin is the use of force, and hopefully that will ultimately bring him to some kind of negotiation.